It's five o'clock on a Wednesday and it's time for Craig Ryan's Magic Review Show. I'm Craig. I'm Ryan. Welcome back to another review show right here on Magic TV. And we got another one of those episodes. Five tricks this week. Yes. Five tricks. I really do think that by next year we're going to open it to ten. Ten tricks on every no. review show. <laughs> yeah. No. You're going to have to learn at least five new tricks every week. No, that's never going to happen, don't worry. But we are back here with another five tricks. This is another good one. I think they're all pretty decent this week. Um, yeah, and we're going to start off by looking at a really, really uh, sort of anticipated release. Uh, and we're going to look at that right now. Yeah. Okay, first up, we've got Case Dismissed by Mark Mason. Now, I remember interviewing Mark just before Blackpool 2022. And he showed me this and he had some for sale at Blackpool and a few people picked it up. It's now officially gone into Murphy's. Uh, Javier has done the trailer along with uh, Murphy's and uh, it's now available from All Good Magic Dealers. And uh, this sold out at Blackpool in like one day. Everybody was picking one up. And the reason is Mark was talking about how this is the perfect opener to a card set. And you know what? I'm kind of inclined to agree with him. Now, before we get any further, we're going to have a look at a full performance of this so you can see exactly what it looks like. And then after the performance, we'll talk about what we think. Now, if you're a magician, you need to take the cards out of the box. But if you're a real magician like me, all you need to do is that. And you can take the cards out just like that. So there we go. That's Case Dismissed uh, by Mark Mason. Now, I said earlier on that this is the perfect opener. I think this is pretty close to being the perfect opener. Uh, I've done something similar to this for years called Modern Times by Henry Evans. Uh, but the gimmick for this is so much better than Modern Times. Um, the gimmick is ingenious. I've never seen anything like it before. Without giving too much away, the way that the gimmick is constructed, it's super clever, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Man, man of few words, right? Yeah. Um, so... You started practicing it, and at first you were really struggling to get yeah, it. Yeah. How long did it take you to learn it? About, um, about ten minutes. About ten minutes. Yeah. At three first, minutes, I was like, um, "How do I do this?" I remember you turning around to me three minutes in, going, "I'm not going to be able to do this." I'm like, "Dude, it's been three minutes. Yes, you are going to be able to do it." But when you get it, it's kind of a little knack thing, and when you get it, it's just like super easy, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you have it set up on top of the deck. It makes a great opener because. It's really, really quick. I've, I've, I've talked to before on the channel about if you're going to open with cards, you want to do something that's going to establish credibility. It's not going to look like a normal card trick. And that's what you have here. You walk over to a group with a pack of cards in your hand. They can see it's cased and boom, you just make the case vanish. I mean, how good is that really when you think about it? Sick. Um, and immediately you're left with a regular deck of cards. There's one card that you need to ditch which you can ditch really easily. You can even say, I'm going to take out the Jokers and just ditch it that way. You don't need to palm anything. Um, but in terms of the actual gimmick itself, it's really well made. It'll last a long time. You can get them in red or blue. Um, and it's very easy to use. There's no angles. In fact, the angles are really good because I talked about Modern Times earlier on. The problem with Modern Times is the first phase of Modern Times had a similar kind of thing where the depth of the box vanished. But you had to be very careful with the angles because... There was no flap at the front like there is here. So you can see it pretty much all the way around just by holding the deck like a box. And then immediately just everything goes boom and, and the box vanishes. That's awesome. Now the tutorial, uh, Mark goes through how to use the gimmick. Yeah. He goes through the history of the gimmick. He goes through all of that. Does he, does he try to fix it? No, he doesn't actually. And that's a good point. He doesn't. But to be honest. Is there a live performance? Yes, well, kind of. There's a studio performance. Okay. So at least it's being performed. It's not as good as a live performance, but there's a studio performance. But um, Javier is also on the tutorial. And what Javier does is he, um, he explains how you can actually use Case Dismissed with um, uh, Reboxed, oh, which yeah. was an also, also another trick by Mark Mason. So you can have the box vanish, and then you can visibly push the cards back into the box as well which is really cool. And he goes through exactly how to combine those two gimmicks to get like this act. I mean, if you if you combine the two of them together, you'll blow people away. I mean, literally you'll blow people away. I'll be honest, I'm gonna use this, but I'm just gonna use it to make the, the deck, van to make the box vanish. I like the idea of just saying, hey, you know, uh, my name's Craig, I'm a magician. You gotta watch very carefully because things happen very quickly. For example, this box, boom. Did you see it go in the pocket? No, you missed that. Okay, well, that's the sort of thing you need to be watching out for. And now I'm into the performance. I really like it. 
Um, yeah, I mean, this is going to get for me. I, I'd say nine hundred hundred percent from you. Ninety nine percent from me. This is about as close to perfect as you're going to get. It's a great trick. It's a perfect opener. Um, the reset is literally seconds. Uh, if you want to do it again at another table, all you have to do is just literally put the gimmick back on top you of the deck. Need, no, all you need to do is just um, deal here, so you go lift, flat down. That's it, isn't it? Yeah. Like, it's so easy. You could probably routine it if you wanted to on the offbeat by making a card box appear around the deck. Can you imagine that? You've got it on top of the deck and the card box appears around the deck and then vanishes. Like, with some misdirection, I reckon you could do that very easily. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun to play with. It's a great trick. It's going to last a long time. Um, there's a couple of different elements in play, but you said, does it teach you how to fix it? No, but we've been playing around with our gimmicks for absolutely, you know, for over a week now, and like, over and over yeah, again. Is that uh, it's over there. there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, awesome. Ryland's been just yeah, like... Yeah, because it's got, if you... I'm not going to show up on camera, but... Yeah, I can see. Yeah. But... Yeah, 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 yeah. Ryland's been playing with this just constantly. He's just been sitting down, just going boom, boom, boom. And the gimmick's absolutely fine. So it seems to like last a lifetime. He is right. It would have been nice to get a live performance, uh, especially when I know Mark's capable of doing that because he's an incredible magician. But um, you get a studio performance and it's fairly obvious as to how the whole thing works. Yeah, 99% from me, 100% from him. It's a really good trick. Let's move on to the next review. Okay, so the next trick we've got is Rattlery by, I have no idea, right, can you read that name? By Martrez Oi Viconti. Viconti, okay, fair enough. Uh, Rattlery, and this is this. Now, there's a lot that you can actually do with a this. A lot. And I'm having it. <laughs> Ryland really likes this, really wants this. Now, it... Looks, it's a bit bulky, but you know, I mean, it's not really uh, too bad. It looks like it's been 3D printed. I might be wrong, um, but I mean, the idea behind this is very, very clever. It's more than just one gimmick. There's like two or three gimmicks built into this. It's a rattle box. It's a way of stealing uh, an object from the box, and it's also a John Kennedy style mystery box. There's an awful lot built into this one thing. Now, before we go any further, I'm going to do a performance for you of one of the routines. So I'm going to show you exactly how you can use this as a mystery box style gimmick. And then when you've looked at that performance, we'll talk about all the different things that this can do. Yeah. Okay, right, I've got three things here. I've got a box of mystery. You can just make sure there's nothing in there. Yeah. You good? Yep. Good. Pack of cards, you can open those up and shuffle them if you want to. Nicely done. Give them one shuffle. And as well as that, I've got a pen. Now you're going to need the pen because you're going to pick and sign a card. Uh, it doesn't matter whether I see it, so grab one out and write your name on it. Uh, that one. Go for it. Ruin every ace trick that I can do from <laughs> now on with this deck of cards. That's absolutely fine. Thank you for that, buddy. Ryland. Boom. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Put a lid on the pen, card gets put back, so uh, just say stop. Stop. There you go, put the card back there. Arms off the table, I've got no space. <laughs> Lovely, there's the card, right? Yep. Now I'm going to leave it in the middle. In fact, you know what? I'm actually just going to put it a little bit further down, if that's okay. So it's right near the bottom. But now, if you want me to, I can shuffle. Would you like me to shuffle? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll give them one of these. Is that fair? Yeah. Um, now, do you remember the box of mystery? Yeah. Do you remember you looked inside the box of mystery? Yeah. What was inside the box of mystery? Nothing. Absolutely nothing, right? All I have to do is riffle towards the box of mystery. Do you know what happens when I riffle towards the box of mystery? No. Well, now, when I lift the lid off, you can see that inside the box of mystery, there is a playing card, a folded up playing card. Hold your hand up for me, because I'm going to take that card out, and you're not going to believe it. But that actually happens to be your card. What? How crazy is that? That's cool. I really like this because there's so many things just built into this one thing, right? There, there really is. It's, it's crazy. So first of all, when you take the lid off the box, they can examine the box. Everything looks fine, right? There's no problem. Uh, I'm going to expose a couple of things here because I think that you really should see just what this can do in order to make a, a, a decision as to whether to buy it or not. Because this only came out a few weeks ago, but I think it's flown under the radar. I couldn't find 
like even a thread on the cafe about this at all. So the first thing that you can do with it is there's a magnet built into the lid and just in the action of putting the lid on the box, you engage uh, a mystery box style gimmick. So you can show the box as empty. You can literally just put the lid on the box. First box I saw do this was the, uh, the Lego box by, uh, by Prop Dog. But then you're into a mystery box style routine. So you can tip this out like this and you've got a cartoon possible location, a little bit like I did in the performance. The other thing this has got built into it is, uh, is it's got a section here where you can steal um, an object out of the box, like a ring or a yeah, coin. Yeah, it's got... Um, it's got a flap there, yeah. Exactly. So you can show the box. You can have them put a sign coin or a ring or something into the box. In the action of putting the lid on, I've literally opened up that flap now, and just by tilting it back slightly, I've stolen that that object out and now I can close the thing back up and put it on the table and now whatever it is that I need has been stolen away so that can go into an impossible object location or whatever the nice thing is this here there's a hidden switch and when I switch this is it this side yeah when I switch this switch like this in the action of picking it up it turns into a rattle box so now I can rattle it and it sounds like they can still hear the object in there but anytime I want to I can lock it so then when they, if I snap my fingers and they come and pick it up, they're not going to hear that rattle. And then when they open up the box, the object is gone. So with one box that you carry around with you, you can use it to vanish an object. You can use it to make an object... Um, uh, Still be inside the box. Yeah, so you can, you can make it... You can, you can, for example, if you wanted to, you can have this as the finale to a uh, ring to impossible location. So, for example, you could take the uh, you could take the box, you could put it on the table, put the lid on, and let them shake it and say, "There's nothing in there." Is there? And they say, "No." And then you engage the thing. Now you do your ring and string routine, and you finish off with the ring vanishing, and it's palmed, and you go, "Look, I'm going to try and make the essence of the ring appear in the box." Look, and they pick it up and they shake it, and they uh, I, you say, "Can you hear the thing in the box?" And they go, "Yeah." They look inside, and there's nothing there. And you go, that's, of course, that's the essence. But then by you putting the lid back on, you can open up the secret compartment. Now you can load the actual ring in the box, lock the rattle box. And now when they shake it again, they'll actually hear the real object. And then they can look into it again and tip it out. So there's so many different ways that you can actually use this. There's so many different things that you can do with it. And it's safe as well to keep your money in, which is what Ryland's excited about with it. Um, but I like the idea of taking this around with me. Yeah, I'm going to put it in my closet. Please. It fits just into your jacket pocket. And if you want to do a, uh, a mystery box, boom, that's all you need to do to do the mystery box. If you want to do uh, a ring or an impossible uh, coin location or whatever, you can, and you want to steal it from the box, you're immediately, with no changing around of the box, you're immediately in a position where you can do that. I mean, that's so cool. And that's so cool. Box. And it's a rattle box. And it's a rattle box as well, yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot to it. As I say, it's flown under the radar. It's well made. It really is well made. It looks a bit odd, but then again, we are magicians. We carry odd stuff around from time to time. Not everything has to look super organic. You know, if you just put this down and you go, this is the box of mystery. You can see there's nothing inside the box of mystery. I'm going to show something to you in a minute. Can I borrow a coin? Can someone lend me a coin? Great. Can you just put the coin in the box? That'd be awesome. You could yeah. use it in a note. Yeah, you could. Yeah, you could because work. if you, you could steal the note out. Mm, you could, absolutely, 100%. You could use it because, as... Because um, you can have it here, and you might think it's flapping open. Well, what you can do is you can go... Yeah, exactly. There's so much you can do with it. Uh, I'm going to give this, this. Yeah, I'm going to give this 95%. I think this is incredible. Like I say, yeah. it's flown under the radar of a lot of people who weren't aware of this, but this is really good. So it's getting 95% from me. What about you? No, 96. 96. So it's 96% from Rhineland. Uh, it's 95% from me. It's really good. You can get it from all good magic dealers. And it's just a really versatile prop that you can carry around with you and you can do an awful lot with. Uh, it's recommended. It's really good. Okay, so the next up, uh, we have Crown by Blank, which is a colour-changing baseball cap. Uh, and it looks like a real baseball cap. It really does. It, uh, it looks like a quality baseball cap, but you can change the colour of this baseball cap anytime you want to. Now, there's a lot of different ways of doing the change. We're going to very quickly show Ryland doing one of the changes with the cap, um, but then we'll talk about what we think of it. Okay, so I'm going to show you something using this um, black hat. So this thing is going to happen on camera three. Look, you can see it here. 
back. One, two, three. Now, this is a red cap. Okay, so there's pros and cons. There's, uh, there's, there's good points and not so good points about the cap now, um, or the crown. One of the things that I really don't like about this is the tutorial was terrible. It was a guy in like a full-on face mask, um, just and, and the whole thing was shot in black and white with subtitles at the bottom with one camera shot. And it was very difficult to see what was going on. Uh, it was very difficult to understand because it would have been better to have multiple camera shots and sort of maybe zoom in when there's certain things that you need to know. It took a long time to try and decipher the uh, tutorial. And the tutorial itself is only like about 10 minutes long or something like that. And he goes through, so, well, I say he, it could be a she, don't know, you just can't tell. But the person on the tutorial uh, goes through so many different ways of actually doing the change. You can flick it. And you can change it by flicking it. You can you can blow it. You can do what Ryland did, which is kind of show the inside of it. And then as you turn it around, it changes color. Um, but it's very difficult to understand how all of those are done because um, they kind of gloss over them very quickly. And it's very difficult to follow the tutorial. But in terms of the actual uh, gimmick itself, in terms of the actual hat, it's very well made. It's too small for my head. So bear that in mind. I have got a big head. Uh, it's but it's kind big. of a bit big, your head. But... Uh, <laughs> a little bit too big, a little bit too big. Uh, and when it's red, it's actually bigger than when it's black. So when it's red, it actually does fit my head. But when it's black, it doesn't. Go, uh, go over there and, and change it to black and I'll show you what I mean. So you've got to bear in mind because the, the way to use this really is to come out in the hat um, and maybe use it as an opener. But if it's too small when it's black and then it's the right size when it's red, it kind of gives the game away. So you need to kind of bear that in mind or maybe you don't come out wearing it. It should actually be a bit, small, a bit more space. So yeah, yeah it when, it's, have a bit more space when it's black space. like that, it just doesn't, it just sits on top of my head. You see what I mean? It doesn't, <clears throat> yeah, no, it doesn't. Don't, it doesn't <coughs> fit. It doesn't fit. So there's that. It fits you perfectly. Fits you, like a fit you. Yeah, it fits you like a glove when it's black, but when it's red, it looks too big. That's the problem. Now, so that's something to bear in mind. Now, you actually like this, don't you? And you've, uh, yeah, and you've been using it in your kids' shows, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, uh, because, you know, it looks like an organic object. So Ryland's been walking out with a black cap, and he's been saying to the kids, right, okay, everyone, shout out your favourite colour. And then you've been pretending to hear red. Who said red? Red. Okay, you want red? We'll do red. Watch this. And then you've been turning it red, but you've not put it back on at that point, have you? You've then just took it and hung it up. Or you, thrown it. Or thrown it. Do you which is Which is a really nice way of using it. So, I mean, there are different ways that you can use it. And the change that you showed on camera, was that the change that you do in the kids' shows? Or were you using yeah. it? Yeah, okay. Uh, I can imagine that that would be a really good change because I don't really do this, but you just show it, you show it as black, you have it this way, and when you turn it around, it's turned red. Is that right? Yeah, yeah okay, cool. Nice. Um, it's got magnets in it, so it'll it'll stay locked and, yeah, in like place. That, and then once you come like, it's like, you can see it's black, like that, and red, like that, and now it's red. Nice. Perfect. You're looking good. You're looking good. Um, so yeah, I mean, it is what it is. It's a, it's a, it's a good method. <coughs> the, the, the cap itself is very well made. It'll last a lifetime. Um, everything is well stitched and as you would expect. And it's quite a nice idea having a color changing cap. You know, it's a very, very good idea. Um, but the tutorial is not very good and that's something that you need to bear in mind. So there's pros and cons, but uh, I think the, uh, the pros massively outweigh the cons. Uh, what are you going to give it? I'm going to give it 85%. 86. 86. So it's 86% for Ryland. It's 85% for me. It's good. Uh, just bear in mind the size of the cap because that might affect things. Yeah. And bear in mind the tutorial is not very good. With that being said, let's move on to the next product. So next up we have CSTC Chinese Super Triple Coin by MS Magic, N2G and Bond Lee. And this is version 3 apparently. Um <laughs> Yeah, I think there's different versions. What's really frustrating, right? Uh, the version oh, I thought, is that volume three, maybe? Mm, I don't know. No, I think it's version three. The um, 
What's really frustrating about this, and you're about to see a performance of it in a minute, but what's really frustrating is that um, the version that I got is for colour changes as well. So you've got uh, a... Um, because they brought out different versions of this at the same time. And the version I've got has a colour change built into it. So the coins change colour, which is fine, which is really good. And that's, that's, that's why I kind of wanted. But, and herein lies the problem, the tutorial is generic across all of the different volumes. So what I mean by that, yeah, it could, so, yeah, that's well, quite normal for NTG. Well, it is quite normal for NTG, and and frankly, the tutorial is terrible. I expect MS Magic's the guy who created that pad, won't they? No, uh, no, they're not. No, Bond Lee, we like Bond yeah, Lee Bond does some good. amazing stuff. He made the cue wall that you yeah, basically yeah. went on. So I was surprised that the tutorial was so bad with Bond Lee being associated with this project. But it was a typical N2G style tutorial, which was basically it's half arse. because they know what they, they, they're they like, we do this, we're going to stick with it. Mm, well, it was it was half arse. You couldn't really see what was going on. But the routines on the project... Did it evolve with that? Yeah. There was only one routine that could actually be done with the set that I'm about to show you. All of the other routines were for... The version where the coins are black completely. So they were teaching coins across and, and three fly and a whole bunch of different things. None of which you could do with the set that I received because uh, the way that you actually need to be able to do it, um, it wouldn't work. It just, it just wouldn't work because you need coins that are black on both sides. So it's very frustrating that like the tutorial, 80% of the tutorial was routines that wouldn't work for the set that I received. And I think if you're going to be charging the money that you are for a product like this, you actually create a separate tutorial for each section, or at least you have more than one trick for the, uh, for the, for the purchasers of this particular trick when they bought the rainbow version. With that being said, the tutorial was terrible anyway. But I'm going to show you a performance of this. So this is one thing that you can do with this. Uh, there's quite a lot that you could do, but let's have a look at the uh, have a look at a performance of one of the routines. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to show you a trick with a piece of nothing. Look, there's a piece of nothing there. You can't see it because there's nothing to see. If I rub that piece of nothing, I can actually turn it into a uh, a Chinese coin. Uh, it's uh, sort of brass and it's it's black and it's got symbols on both sides, and those symbols mean made in Taiwan. Now let me see if I can do that again. There's a second coin there. You can't see it, but if I wave it around this one like this. Uh, it actually becomes visible. That's coin number two. Now it's basically the same as the first one. It's black and uh, it's, it's black and sort of uh, gold or or brass. And you've got that hole right there through the middle. Now I'm going to try and do that one last time because you know the old expression, "All good things come in threes." Well, the third one is uh, is right there. There it is. That's coin number three. And again, it's the same as all the others. It's sort of black and 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 brass, and it's uh, it's got a hole in it. We're going to try and do something because. That's making coins appear. That's one of the first things that you learn when you when you get into coin magic. The second thing you learn is how to make coins change. You see, if I took this coin, I could actually make it change from a black Chinese coin into a green Chinese coin. Let me do that again. See, we're going to try and go for three different colours. So if I take this one here and wave these two over, this one turns into a red Chinese coin. So now we've got a red one, we've got a green one, we've got a black one. The last thing you have to learn as a coin magician is how to make coins vanish. Look, the first coin, you just take it, you squeeze it into nothing and you hang it right there. That leaves us with two coins. Let me see if I can do the same with this one. If I take this one and squeeze, I can take that one and squeeze it into nothing. It leaves us with the final coin. The last one is the hardest one to lot, But still, I can make that one vanish as well. And that is the three coin trick. Okay, so that was um, uh, just using the gimmicked coins. So what you get with the uh, CSTC uh, Rainbow Edition, which is what we're looking at here, you get a regular N2G style red coin, a regular N2G style green coin, a regular black coin, and then you get the gimmick. Now this is uh, the gimmick. And what it is basically, it's, a, it's like a split coin. It's a triple split coin, okay? but with different colours on each side and made out of Chinese coins. So you have a, uh, a Chinese black black, a Chinese black green, and a Chinese black red. And they all stick together, and when they do stick together, 
you have one unit. So you can uh, you can make coins appear and you can make it look like they're just appearing out of nowhere. There's a lot you can actually do with this. There you go, you can see there's quite a lot you can do. Um, and then you can obviously vanish them as well. So you can actually uh, take the coins and vanish them and you can make them change color. There's a lot you can do. It's, 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 it's a very well-made coin. The coins themselves are very well-made. And uh, as long as you're mindful of your angles, which you always have to be with split coins, you don't want to show them edge on like this. You want to show them uh, flat to the audience. As long as you do that, you're going to be absolutely fine. Um, but for example, you know, I've spent a long time performing with split coins. I've spent a long time um, understanding how split coins work and understanding the yeah. angle restrictions with split coins. Yes, you have. None of that, none of that was explained on the project. Really? Yeah, it, they, weren't, they weren't talking about angles and how you need to hold them and the best way to separate the coins or anything like that. It was your typical N2G, half ass tutorial. Two minutes. Where it was like, uh, well, it was a bit more than two minutes, but it was just, that time. they glossed through the whole thing they didn't give you the information you need. So if you're new into coin magic and you don't really fully understand about angles, this is going to be something that you might struggle with because you're not getting the correct information. And also, if you watch the tutorial, you're gonna be frustrated if you have a set like this, that 80% of the routines you can't do, and the routines that you can do are half-assed to the point that you're probably not gonna even uh, understand how to do it anyway. It's just, you know, it's just typical N2G. It's a good idea and it's a well-made product, but they've just ballsed it up, to be honest, as far as I can say. So if I was, if I was, if I was rating this purely on the quality of the gimmick, I'd give it like 90%. But when you're spending the type of money that you are on this, you expect a really good tutorial that covers everything, and that's not what you get here. And I have to rate the thing based on everything. When you're talking about coin magic and you're talking about how to actually make coin magic deceptive, there's more information that you need to put into this than just a camera um, uh, shot in slow motion, just explaining how to do the moves and not really following what's going on. So I'm going to give this 30%. Uh, it's, it's high if you want just the coin. If you like the idea of getting a triple coin, great. And that's perfect if you're an experienced coin worker. But if you're not, 30%, man. What about you? Mm. Zero. Zero percent? Yeah. You really don't like it. All right, then. Zero percent from Ryan, 30% from me. Seriously, if there's anybody from N2G listening, or Bon Lee, if you're listening, because you'll normally get this stuff right, please, please work on your tutorials and actually... Put a bit of care into them. Put a little bit of attention into them and treat your customers with respect as opposed to basically just laughing at them all the way to the bank. Okay, so final uh, routine, we have Ink Hole. And this is incredibly expensive. It's by French Drop. And Je what's that? What's that at the bottom? Genio or something? Genio? Gento. 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 So this is, uh, this is called uh, Ink Hole by Gento. This is a very expensive coin trick. Like, this is not cheap. Uh, and a lot of people have asked us to review it's like this. It's, it's like 300 quid or something like that. Now, I've spent a lot of money on very expensive coin gimmicks with Jamie Schoolcraft and Todd Lassen when he was alive and um, Ronald Davis and people like that. So I'm used to spending money on high quality coins and I look at it as an investment. I don't do anything by Tango. Not that there's anything wrong with Tango, uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but I prefer, because I'm a coin guy, I do a lot of coin magic, I prefer my coin, mag coin gimmicks to be really made to a very high quality. And that's what I get with those people that I mentioned. Um, so the price of this is expensive, 100%. It is not a cheap trick. However, I have never seen anything quite like this before. When I looked at it, I was like, ah, oh, it's just going to be some sort of uh, karate coin style thing. But it's not. It's actually really, good. really, really good. I'm going to. said it might be trick of the week. I think this is trick of the week. I actually uh, took this out to a gig yesterday, didn't I? So yes, I, had a, did. uh, I had a gig yesterday. Uh, I was working with Luch, actually, uh, who's an incredible mind reader from Nottingham. And he was there booked as a mind reader. I was booked as a magician. And um, yeah, I actually put this in. And the reactions that I got from this were crazy good. Uh, I'm going to give you a performance of it so you can see exactly what it is that happens with this trick. Um, but uh, spoiler, I really like this. Okay, so I have a little, uh, a little purse here. And inside this purse is a pure silver American dollar. 
And the first thing that I'd like you to do is have a look at the coin and check it out and make sure it's okay. Make sure there's nothing weird about it and it is what it appears to be. Make sure it's just a normal coin. And while you're doing that, I also want you to have a look at this pen and check this pen out. And if the person was here, they would look at the coin, they would look at the pen, everything would be fine, everything would be okay. And you, you explain that you're going to do an illusion, okay? This is an illusion. It's not real. It's going to look real, but it's not real. I'm going to create an illusion for you. Um, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Now, the idea is that I'm going to draw on this, uh, on this coin. So I'm going to start off by taking the pen. And I'm going to draw. Basically, the whole idea is to make this look like a hole. I'm not the best artist in the world, but I'm sure you'll agree that that kind of looks a little bit like a hole. Does that look like a hole there, Ryan? Yeah. Should look like a hole. Now, the thing is, it's not a hole. We know that. It's just ink. If I hold it against my black top, it looks like a hole. But if I hold it against my hand, you can see it's just ink. If I hold it here, it's a hole. If I hold it here, it's ink. We know it's not really a hole because obviously we know that I just drew it on there. But when you hold it here, it really does look like a hole. The thing is, if I snap my fingers, I can create the illusion that there really is a hole there. You can actually create an illusion that this pen is going right through that hole. Now, it's impossible for the pen to go through the hole because we know that there's no hole. We know, we know it's literally just a, um, just a, 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 a ink, really. But let's see if we can go one step further. Keep an eye on that, on that right there, okay? Because this time, I'm gonna just push my finger right through the hole and I can create the illusion that my finger is going right through the hole. Now, it's not. It looks like it is, but it's not. Because you see, if I just pull it away, even though it looks like there's a hole there, there's actually no hole. We know there's no hole because it's just ink. But I can go one step further and I can actually take that and I can rub it. And when I rub it, I can make that ink vanish, leaving us just with a coin, just with a pen, just with the purse that it came from that's dropped on the floor that everybody could examine Okay, so the first thing I need to say is the performances for this are really well done. You have live performances. Uh, there's three different routines. There's the main routine. There's the examinable routine, which I just showed you. And I'm definitely doing a review show revisited on this soon. And then there's uh, another version, which we'll get to in a minute. The first two routines are very similar. Now, you get a pure silver coin here. This is a, a silver Morgan dollar. Beautiful coin. And then you get the gimmick. Now, this is the gimmicked coin. And one of the things that makes this so cool is it doesn't look like it's gimmicked. But the whole thing is constructed really, really nicely. So you can just have this all in your pocket, bring it out. You can take out the coin. You can have the coin examined. You can take out the uh, the pen. You can have the pen examined and you're into the routine. You just put this away, you're into the routine. Now, what's, this feels a little bit like Acme Portable Hole. It, yeah, it does. You know, like does, Lloyd's yeah. thing. It really yeah. does feel like this because, you know, you take the uh, you take the coin, you've just shown it completely. You take the coin and you take the, uh, the the Sharpie marker and, you you know, you draw the thing on the on there. And then immediately you show it. And, I mean, you're really up close here, right? Yeah. That just looks like a coin, right? I was doing this yesterday and nobody could see anything. Like, it looked really, really strong. Um, is, and people are just surrounded me and it looks there like there's ink on the coin. It looks here like there's a hole, but then immediately you can just go boom and put your finger in and it just looks so good, doesn't it? And then you can take your finger out and, and come back here and you can, you know, you can take that. There's so much you can do with this. This is a really strong trick, like really, really strong. Yes, it's expensive and not everybody will be doing this. In fact, I think very few people will be doing this. Um, but the people that do it, this is a, this is a really commercial walk around piece. Um, this is something that you could do in a parlor show. You can see this from a distance, but it can be done close up as well. The final routine. So there's, they, they've broken everything up into chapters. So there's an introduction, then there's a, a section on the gimmick, and then there's three performances and the explanations of the three routines. Um, the other trick, which is good, but I wouldn't do it is, uh, you even get a little carrying case to keep it safe in. Um, the other thing is you get, uh, you get, uh, well, they're in here, so I can't be asked to get them out, but you get, um, um, there you go. Uh, you get little black stickers that are, that look like that, uh, that, that 
hole, so to speak. You get little black stickers. And the idea of the black stickers is you can actually take a sticker, stick it onto the, um, onto the, uh, the coin, put your finger through, and then pull the sticker off. And it's just another way of doing it. It's actually a really nice, really clever way of doing it. Um, yeah, uh, it's, it's just, I, I've got nothing else to say about this. Not everyone's gonna wanna buy it because it is very, very expensive. But as far as I'm concerned, I've never seen, I, I know a lot about gimmick coins. I've never seen a gimmick coin like this before. There's three or four principles at play here. It's not very difficult to do. Other than switching a coin in and switching it out again at the end, there's hardly anything that you need to do about this. It just fits inside this purse. You're good to go. You just take this at a Sharpie. It takes up no pocket space. You've got that incredible moment where the pen goes through. Obviously, one thing to consider, you have to be wearing some sort of black, like yeah. a black jacket, black shirt, black t-shirt, something like that, because obviously that's how the whole thing works. Um, but as long as you're wearing something black, then the illusion is absolutely perfect. And uh, I highly recommend this. I'm really glad I got this. Highly recommended. I'm going to give this 100%. For me, this is Trick of the Week. I know for you, Case Dismissed is Trick of the Week. Yeah. But for me, this is this is Trick of the Week. This case is cool. So what are you going to give it? I'm giving it 100%. Um, 100, 100%. 100%. Yeah. That's more than you gave Case Dismissed. And you said Case no. Dismissed was Trick case of the Week. Case Dismissed is 120 120%. Well, Michael, who edits this, is going to have fun now. He's going to get to this point and realise he's got to go back and change the percentage on case dismissed. 101% from Ryland, 100% from me. This is a really cool trick. I absolutely love it and uh, I highly recommend it. There you go. It's called Inkhole. Yeah. And that's another Avisha in the back. That's another Avisha in the back. That's another Avisha in the back. It is another review show in the bag, guys. Thank you once again for joining us right here on... Magic TV. Well done. Uh, <laughs> you want to see more videos like this, like the video, subscribe to the channel. We'll be back again next Wednesday with another review show. If you want to check out Ryland's Instagram channel, you can do so. It's, double, uh, it's uh, Ryland the Kid Magician. You can also check him out on Facebook. You can also check him out on YouTube. Uh, and if you haven't already done so, go check out The Netrix. The URL for The Netrix is... www.thenetrix.cookies actually dot com but we'll go for dot cookies whatever so it's www.thenetrix dot whatever uh you can go check it out ryan spends most of his time on there learning new magic i will be back again tomorrow with another video i'll be back um later on today with the hidden gems so once again thank you very much for joining me i'm craig i'm ryan we'll see you again take care bye everyone bye bye